Here, take this. You might need it. Big game coming up. <laughs> My thesis defense is on Friday. Without Mr. Smith, there would be no MIT in Cambridge, so they say it's good luck to rub his nose. So today, I'm going to tell you a story about how we can zoom in down to the nanoscale. And by looking at biology at the nanoscale and the dynamics at the nanoscale, we can get an understanding of a fundamental process, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the powerhouse for almost all life on Earth. 130 terawatts of sunlight are captured and converted to over 100 billion tons of biomass each year. But photosynthesis has a limitation, and that limitation is its efficiency. Photosynthetic organisms operate at less than 10% power conversion efficiency. And so what this means is that there's a limitation in how much crops we can produce and how much biofuels we can produce. And in the face of our growing issues of food scarcity and our need for renewable energy sources, this is indeed a major limitation. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is work we're doing towards removing this limitation by understanding the sources of inefficiency, modeling them, and beginning the process of thinking about ways to re-engineer this so that we can increase our crops and increase our biofuels. So one source of inefficiency occurs in the very first steps of photosynthesis, when up to 70% of absorbed energy is dissipated as heat. Now the reason for this inefficiency, we can see just by looking at solar intensity at a point on the Earth's surface. And so what we see is that it fluctuates. We have sunrise, sunset, clouds, and shadows. And for a photosynthetic system, this amount of energy is useful. This is the amount that can produce crops, but this amount of energy is dangerous. Too much light can cause damage. So what photosynthetic systems do is they take this input and they regulate it so that they only keep the useful energy. And we want to get an understanding 
of what is the system responsible for this modulation and what is the feedback loop that controls this system with the idea that from this understanding, we can model it and re-engineer it to increase crops and increase biofuels. So to think about this process, we can start by zooming in on photosynthesis. This picture of the Earth's surface has green from trees, or what are we talking about today, algae, which are of particular interest for biofuel applications. Within the algae, there are these membrane stacks and if we look, rotate and look top down on the membrane, we see that there's this protein network. Now this protein network is responsible for the conversion of solar energy to chemical energy, the first 250 picoseconds of photosynthesis. So we can think about how this molecular machinery works by taking a simpler picture. And there's basically two pieces. There's a light harvesting antenna and the reaction center and associated proteins. Now, initial absorption of energy in photosynthetic systems occurs primarily in the antenna. And then this energy flows through this protein network to the reaction center where electricity is generated. So this energy flow has three really important characteristics. It is efficient, it is directional, and it is adaptable. Research in my lab focuses on understanding all three of these characteristics. But today, I'm just going to tell you about this last one, understanding the regulated response to light intensity. Specifically, the system keeps as close as possible to a constant flux reaching the reaction center by making this energy flow controllably efficient. And that's done by having one of these proteins switch into a site of dissipation. And by dissipation, I mean that this excitation energy is essentially hijacked and converted into heat. So we want to understand this dissipative state that emerges under sunny conditions and the efficient state where energy flows towards the reaction center under cloudy conditions, as well as the dynamics between them. So to do that, we take a protein responsible for dissipation and we put it in a highly sensitive microscope. Now this microscope allows us to look at the proteins one at a time. <laughs> so I think the microscope was so important and so impressive that they had to illustrate that with something falling from the ceiling. <laughs> because it really is phenomenal that we're able to have the sensitivity to look at just one protein. And we can measure the fluorescence intensity and the fluorescence lifetime of individual proteins and build up statistics. And we get the this kind of distribution of behaviors. So we see that there's actually two forms of this protein, where we have this efficient state and this dissipative state. So from this experiment and many others, we were able to identify these two states, as well as the molecular mechanisms between them, and their dynamics which we want to think about within the context of this feedback loop. And specifically, we identified that this dissipative state has two components. One form that's activated in response to a sudden change, like a cloud passing over. And another form that's activated in response to a gradual change, like sunrise. So what we were able to find is that photosynthetic systems respond to solar intensity on two ways. And those two ways match the two different types of changes that you have in solar intensity. And so now, if we're thinking about this process within the context of understanding and improving the efficiency, we've been able to take a step towards this first part, understanding this efficiency, where we identified these two different mechanisms. And now thinking about the frontiers and the future, we can continue to build our understanding, develop models, and think about ways we can re-engineer not just circuitry, but biological circuitry, with the goal of getting the crops and the fuels that we'll need as a society.